shoot. I was trying to take a picture. <laughs> Guys, how do I take this off? Hello. I'm early. <laughs> Guys, I was playing with the filters and I was trying to take a picture and I guess I have just started the live and now I don't know how to take oh okay hold on I can take this off there we go okay hi <laughs> here we go hello everyone hello and welcome to another episode of a tune in okay if you hear that noise it's because I'm sitting on top of Yes? Lauren's in your bathroom. Lauren, it's 3.33. See, yeah, and I'm on live. Oh, okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> that was my mother. We love a household. She was ready, though. She was ready to let me know that I needed to go live, so at least. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome. Happy Sunday uh, from wherever you are in the world. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you very much. Um, yes, estoy grabando en el baño. That's what I was just asked. Um, I had to find a place that's quiet. My parents are watching TV. They have no interest in uh, stopping their fun for a little old me. So I was like, all right, <laughs> I'll find a spot. And then there's just this lovely light here that my mom has to do her makeup. So I have a little setup. You see that lighting? Killed it. Um, anyways, I have a super special guest today because here on Attunement, what are we doing? We're talking about healing. We're talking about how are we coping? How are we getting through these moments? Um, shout out to everything going on right now. Um, things are still happening, everyone. Um, I know that it's seemingly like I'm in Miami and things are going back to normal right now obviously we still need our masks and everything but things are slowly but surely opening up and i just feel like i'm in this twilight zone honestly on a regular basis i'm just like what the fuck is going on are we are we in are we out are we down to help each other out here are we going to ignore these things like what do we really are we going to cater to this are we not i just the meal. So I'm staying put. I'm staying. I'm continuing my situation. I'm, I've just been going between my parents' house and my house, and I've just been chilling. <laughs> I'm chilling. I'm getting organized, doing things that I need to be doing, getting better at doing that. You know what it is, and that's what we're here to talk about. So today I have a beautiful special guest who's a good friend of mine. Um, he is so talented. It's a bit um, otherworldly, if you will. He's just ridiculous. So, where are you, my friend? Oop. Let's see, how do I find people? See, this is why. Hello, Elena. All right, you know what? Jacob, my friend Jacob Collier is coming on today, and we're going to talk about music and sound and the healing vibrations of sound. Super important. Um, so I told him to give me five minutes, so I'm going to, I'm positive he's respecting that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's who's, who our guest is today, so we're going to be talking to him. In a little bit, he is. A, if you don't know who Jacob is, Jacob is an incredible musician, <sighs> singer. He plays piano. He plays percussion. He produces. He mixes. He plays everything. He's just one of the most talented human beings I've ever. The way he understands music and sees music is just like very special. And I, I've loved watching his journey and just seeing him kill it. So it's been very, very. It's been a a crazy whirlwind to watch that kid. <laughs> He's just so incredible. Um, so yeah, you guys are going to get an opportunity to hear a little chat between us today. In the meantime, how are you guys feeling? How are How is your 
quarantena going. Quarantena. Anybody? Anybody? Is that, are, are you guys still following rules? Are you still taking care of your bodies? Have you developed new habits? New good habits? Bad habits? What have you been feeling? Does anybody want to tell me? There is mom. There's my, there he is. All right, we're going to go. You guys can comment how you're feeling and we'll talk about it in a minute. But here is my friend. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> Hello! Okay, what is, what is up? Yeah, I thought I just, this was a last minute decision. But I, had to I love it. it. No, I'm inspired by it. I'm wearing a gray sweatshirt right now. So. Okay, I mean, I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, I'm, also, today I'm actually wearing things. a, I'm wearing a, I'm actually wearing Stevie Wonder. I don't know if you can see him, but he's like, he's there. He's there singing Honestly, songs. Is everything. Yo. Thank you. This is so cool. Hey, thanks for having me. This is like a privilege and a pleasure. You've been rocking with this, with this whole conversations vibe. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you so much for being on. I'm so, I know that you're busy. I know you just dropped a song. Oh, I did. I know that you're out here killing it. So thank you so much for making the time. I appreciate it. You are beyond welcome, sincerely. Yay. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of like get it to pick your brain a little bit because first of all you're just like a, an ingenious little thing I, I just, hey now okay uh -uh. <laughs> no, 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 for real though like when i hear you speak about music i'm like am i a musician was this my, <laughs> was this my song or am i sure oh man well no, thank you that's real, very just, that's very kind of you it's very magical so yeah i just want to pick your brain a little bit about just how i mean you can just tell like the people because i know that this is like a new audience for you probably so um, just like, how did you get into music? What was it about music that just like made you like gravitate towards it as an outlet? Oh yeah, good question. Musical linguistics. Um, so, okay, hey everybody, I'm Jacob. This is my room and I, I learned to walk in this room when I was one year old. So this is like my real family home vibe. It's a, it's a bit of a mess, but yeah, I'm one of those people who's always lived in the same house, which I love, I, I love it. I can't imagine ever really moving the family home anchor at this point because it's so established. Mm -hmm. And so what I used to do as a kid was just was explore music in this room. I would listen to it and I would, I would start to mess around with things that I, that I liked, you know, be like, well, if this note goes here, then this note goes here, then this note goes here, then I've got three notes and that's a chord. And, and I, was, I guess I was, I was pretty much self-taught. So I used to just explore how, um, yeah, how, to sort of, how to put these different materials together in strange ways. And I got Cubase, which is like a recording software when I was seven years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cubase. Are you a Cubase user? I'm not on Cubase, no, but I know someone like who's on Cubase who we were talking about that. It's, I'm, I'm it's a whole vibe. I just downloaded Pro Tools for the first time. That's a big moment. Oh, congratulations. I know, I know. I plugged it in here oh. and I have it all set up and I recorded my very first thing and I was just like, I feel that must, like that, that must feel so good. That must it feel really, amazing. Ooh, it makes me feel so nice. I just, I'm so oh, excited yeah. to like learn how to just engineer and produce myself and just like have like the like the freedom to play with that and see what it is that I really like and, and not just kind of like depend on having to dictate to someone like I want a little more of this. I want this and that. that. I don't know what I'm saying, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like when you get that skill set, you're just unstoppable because you'll you'll be like. You'll, you'll, you'll go bang and everything will come out naturally. And I think for me, it was like the freedom of that, that I loved that as a kid. And I wanted to be able to do it. I wanted to have the control of all the elements and get the groove to feel just right and get the course to feel just right. And, mm -hmm. and so it, like that, like muckery, I just, I've always loved it. And so I sat basically in this exact chair and just threw paint at the wall for 25 years and counting. Okay. Um, and yeah, eventually found, I guess, a bunch of materials that I really believed in. And it's, it's always changing, like what you like is always changing, but- When you say of, materials, do you mean like things to make the sounds that you're, that you're doing? Everything, I guess. It's like almost like vocab. It's like when you learn a language, you wanna, you wanna establish a sense of vocab, like, oh, I like it when this is possible, or I like it when this is possible. So I might, I might steal a chord from here or a sound, like a snare drum or a kick drum or a hi-hat from here, or a, a, like a, a vocal riff from Stevie, whatever. Um, and, and eventually you, you sort of like through this natural process of kind of acceptance and 
and and rejection that happens i guess as a kid when you're like okay, this feels good to me this feels good to me you're just kind of led to a place where you are in charge of your own tastes and the more you can like invert the direction of the listening into a making process just the more exciting the whole thing is and it's i've, I've always found it so exciting to to make music as i'm learning it especially when i half know it you know when it's like i kind of understand this thing I might as well get started making with it and then maybe something will happen and yeah. normally that's that's like the most exciting stuff like it's more exciting than if i know i know something already 100 you know? i see i'm kind of in this space right now where i you like when i was younger i used to just kind of create with no thought about it um all kinds of things though but i never really got into like the technicalities of music i really just like loved listening to songs and dissecting lyrics and like that's the most lyrics. important stuff I mean, I think that it's all just kind of interesting, like what we gravitate towards, you know what I mean? Like, and sure. so I, I, yeah. I've always been like a writer. Like that was the first thing that I was really sure that I did, you know what I mean? Like to express myself. Like, yeah, I, I can, I can tell that. Or with words and just kind of like figure out what, what I was trying to say, you know what I mean? And try to say it yeah. in like three minutes, I thought was really fascinating. But also I did more poetry than anything when I was younger. Really? Right Cause yeah, I, I the yeah. Where I'm, I'm in what you're talking about, which is just like, taking that listening and, and and having an output for it, you know what I mean? In yeah. For the first time ever, because I always had this, like, this little stigma in my mind that like women were capable of doing that, which doesn't mean anything, because there's a lot of beautiful women out there who do do it. But oh, I, yeah. honestly, I just was surrounded by so much, so many men doing production. And like, and I was 16 when I started in the industry. So right. all I saw was men doing this stuff. So I was like, oh, shit, like, I just, I have to outsource this particular thing, you know, cause I'm a singer and I'm yeah. a writer, but I need to outsource this. But I'm realizing that's like, no, I love music. Like I love sounds and figuring out how they work too. So maybe I should just experiment with that, you know? Oh, just for sure, for sure, for sure. Throw at the wall, like you said. <laughs> exactly. And, and like, as the writer of the song, that like, you probably have the best clue of kind of conceptually what you want to, you know, what, what you want the thing to feel like. And so if you hear, have those tools, yeah. then you're just, you're, then, then, you know, then you're able to, to illustrate them, which is wonderful. And, yeah, it's it's a funny thing. I've I've I'm working on this massive sort of quadruple album at the moment, uh, four albums in one. This thing called Jesse, and so it's like about about forty collaborators wide, and so collaborators wow. from like you know so mid mid Africa and South America and Portugal and all sorts of crazy places, and it's just amazing to I'm I guess so learn from wow. how people like, oh, like hey, a compilation of sound from across the world. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, volume one, two, three, and four, and it's just all the things that I love in one basket. And like the first two volumes have been released, but the, the second two, which are really yeah, no. exciting, those, those, those are coming out soon. And, and I've just, I've, I've watched these people create alongside me with this project and also just in their own right for so many years. And it's amazing to meet the people and realize how they work. And it is one thing I've been, I've been feeling is that in general, female musicians don't tend to think of themselves as producers, which I just don't understand. I mean, I understand it in some ways, but <laughs> it's, it's make, it, makes no, like it kind of makes no sense. When you're in a room and making production decisions, like nobody at the end of it is like, oh, she gets production credit. You know what I mean? Like, that just I, blows I my mind. I, I feel just, that yeah. so heavily because I, sometimes I, I'm at this place where I'm like, I, I pick those chords, I pick where we went. Like, right, I that's my sound. Very much like a so intimate part of like the sounds that were chosen and like, the like the even down to the mixing of the sound and then of I course still, yeah for some reason don't have the like had haven't had because i'm in a new place now but like haven't had the nerve to be like yo like i kind of low-key help produce right like you know like yeah yeah, yeah 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 not what that is like picking, oh, for that, sure. like picking what we're gonna be doing here yeah i mean if you're if you're talking about mixing and you're talking about sound choice and stuff then you're then you're the producer um yeah, it's a funny thing. I, I've always been no, like no, super no, protective. I'm not even of... like I'm the sole producer in Nina, eh? so like I feel like of there's course, a lot yeah. of such a collaborative process for me. But it's also like I feel like I'm part of it. Is the only thing that I mean. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. I think it's so important nowadays for artists to realize just how the scene is changing, and people with ideas can make ideas happen almost with nobody else. Like for me, I I sat in this chair and made things basically all on my own from day yeah. one you and so i was i quarantined to myself so yeah <laughs> so so this year's like craziness is in some ways it's just it kind of like an extension of my natural process in a strange kind of a way no but, me too bro i i work with that yeah like isolated like, and just like in my own world like that's when i'm first of all the least inhibited and second of all just yeah. the most like 
creative like i'm just i feel like flowy <laughs> you're, yeah you're flowy so so are you like a would you say you're an introvert or an extrovert i think i don't know ma'am see whenever i'm asked to think to choose between things that are supposed to be at the opposite of the spectrum i yeah. always put myself kind of at the intersect of them yeah me too Often, and i feel like i'm an intersect of that because i love to be surrounded by people i love and i do get recharged by people i love but i also definitely am like so precious about my alone time and my own space so I, I i don't know i feel like i'm very much both it depends on like where i'm at on a personal level energy wise you know what i mean yeah for sure absolutely yeah you, you strike me as a kind of i mean it's the same thing yeah like a like an <laughs> in, intersect vert or something i don't know but <laughs> yeah so like i i do <laughs> I definitely draw my energy from from within myself, but I definitely react to energy that comes from outside in a visceral way. And I, I guess you, you strike me as someone who's similar. Like I'm your source is in, your source is in you, but but you're like totally open, which I love. And I, I'm just wondering how you've been thinking about or experiencing, or have you felt a change in energy in this period of time when there's far less of the kind of outward thing, and it's so much more inner. Like, do, have you found yourself? kind of searching for new ways to source energy like to replace those sources that perhaps you found in the real world like for example touring and collaborating in the studio and hanging out with friends and all these kind of things that can be super recharging how have you found that like kind of transition in this weird time i think i've found first of all it's this time has really enabled me to confront a lot of the kind of escape methods that i had mm -hmm. kind of gone into that were not necessarily very healthy for me you know like I just because I've had to be in my own space and haven't had like an outward reason to be doing what I'm doing like there's more mm -hmm. inner, inner accountability that I've definitely been experiencing oh yeah that's so well put yeah and so I've been definitely going through that really hardcore but then I also like I really miss being in nature like the most because yeah me I don't want to be one of those assholes in Florida that goes to the beach, but like I really want to go to the beach. You know what I mean? but, but, like, but you do. Yeah. I really do. And I really want to like, I've been going outside in terms of like my backyard. Like my parents have a beautiful backyard that I get to kind of be in and tan in or whatever. But like, I, really, oh, yeah. I love um, being able to explore outdoors and just kind of be, especially in the water. So I've missed that a bit. You're a water baby. I'm a water baby through and through. Water baby. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's that, that's a tricky one. I haven't left my sort of radius, but very, very close to home radius for like I don't know, two months now or whatever. Yeah, um, I, feel like I, I saw someone say eighty days, but like I really don't know anymore. Like yeah. I'm like all I it's, know is that June is literally in a week and I'm June, June's about to pop. <laughs> June's about to pop. And I'm just like, Whoa. It's insane. But you know what's funny is that I think a lot of the time artists like you know m you know musicians artists painters people who think outside the box for a living uh, who are lucky enough to do so we live in this kind of time frame which is bendy war. and and, it's and war. war anyway so i've been writing this piece and that's literally how it starts it's like time is literally a construct like i'm more sure of it now than ever in my whole life oh yeah 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 completely this completely literally, it's a joke you don't feel it's passing unless you have something to do unless you're told to feel it's passing yeah yeah it's a fascinating yeah. it's a fascinating thing but i think for me like a lot of the world is now experiencing that flux time frame which no, for us is like well right? yeah That's of course absurd. like yeah oh. yeah it's like you you, you remove all the, all the the markers you know all the all the um all the rounders pillars from your day there's no you know this happens which leads to this which is this more just like amorphous zone and then that makes some things easier and then some things way harder right mm -hmm. um are you a, are you an early bird do you get up first thing in the morning so i've been really weird these past few days i'm not gonna yeah. lie <laughs> like my sleep schedules have not been consistent i'm not even gonna lie last night i went to sleep at 8 p.m right but then so what, I'm sorry. 8 p.m. Are you kidding me? No, I passed out. I passed out on the couch. I passed out on the couch at 8 p.m. I woke up at like 11, and I was like, "Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go to. I gotta go to my bed." <laughs> like, so I go to my bed. <laughs> I go to sleep. I wake up at four o'clock in the morning. Boom. It's a whole, I, whole zone. I was like, "What am I doing up?" And I was wired, kind of up. Not even just up, but like I was up. 
So you had your eight hours. That's the thing. You were ready. Yeah, and I started writing. I had just like kind of like. Yeah, great. So I started writing, and then I fell back asleep for like three more, four more hours. It was weird. That's I mean, kind of amazing. Like you know, really in in Shakespeare's time, this is what something I recently learned. In Shakespeare's time, um, there, so you had like a first sleep and a second sleep. And then there was like a zone in the middle where people did things for an hour in the middle of the night. And that was the normal way of being. So you'd like cook something or write something or go for a walk or like make love or whatever. And it's, it's kind of an amazing vibe because it's like not like the rest of the day where you're just like getting on with things. It's like almost like you gifted a little sliver. Yeah, and you sleep for four hours and you wake up kind of, kind of like you did. You like sleep for four hours, you wake up, you have a little zone and you enter into a task that is you know, like kind of like half dream, half awake kind of thing, you know, and then you go back to sleep and you wake up and you're ready to go. And like, and that traditionally apparently is what our bodies were kind of built for. Yeah. Like that we're built for to, to have like a, a rest and then a, an up energy and then a down energy and then the day. But now we think it's this block of time that you get. And apparently that's like not optimum. So like your, what you just described sounds like the perfect use of the human body. Sick. Congrats. <laughs> Because I thought I was just being a crazy ass, so I appreciate no, I don't, I don't that, think so. <laughs> that validation really means a lot. Kudos, yeah, kudos for your choices there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wow, I yeah. love these random like facts that you have to whip out of that sombrero. Oh, I've got bags of useless information. If you just just ask. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Honestly, yeah. that's a gift. That's a talent. That's a party trick. That's a lot in, of in, in some ways, yeah, but oftentimes, you know, when I'm trying to get to sleep at 8 p.m., which I never am, why would I be trying to get to sleep that early? I don't um, know why I felt, I honestly did not explain to you why I fell asleep that early. Whoa, guys, I lost my lighting. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, you just, you power out. Hold on, there we go, we're back. Whoa. So, <laughs> oh, okay, so are you doing, are you doing like laptop as the, as the backlit thing? No, this, my mom has this like, um bluetooth speaker hold on i'm trying to find <laughs> there you go there oh you go. yeah you've got one of those glowy circular mirrors right you know what i mean yeah i know exactly you gotta what get that up close makeup because you can't see for shit <laughs> yeah um no for sure but yeah uh when i'm trying to get when i'm not trying to go to sleep at 8 p.m i go to sleep about 4 a.m so like your wake up time Wow. Per what you just described. I'm like a, I'm very much a night, night boy. So yeah. I'm a night boy, but, I'm a night boy too. I'm a okay, night, cool. You're a night I'm boy a night too. Well. We're going to get along great. Um, but yeah, but anyway, what I was going to say was it's the useless information that keeps me awake. It would be like, and my mind will chatter away and, and kind of make connections. And some of it's really great and some of it's just loopy and, and useless. But I mean, it's life. Wow. You know. I feel you yeah. so hard uh, do you have any like chatter quieter chatter quieter chatter quieterness like techniques for getting the to go like what the heck are you what do you mean <laughs> chatter quietness chatter quietness like i, I you know like was your that brain chatters what that word was? well i mean no well yeah i guess i i don't know i made it up just then right i quite like it i'm gonna write down on my so, so chatter quietness being things that make the chatter in your brain just less kind of like loud, chatter less overwhelming. Quietness. Chatter quietness, yeah. Things that just go. Wow, okay. Yeah, you you strike me as the kind of person who has like things up her sleeve to like. Yeah, like, for me, chamomile tea with valerian root tea and some honey. Knock me right the fuck out. Yes. Yeah. Hey, do you, uh, do you eat tea bags? No. Do no, you, you don't. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs> yeah, I do actually. Yeah, I do. Well, I don't swallow them. But... How do you eat a tea bag? Do you have like You're... some sort of organic you... tea bag that you use? You just no. I don't eat. I don't eat it. I just like. I just mm. suck on it. This is great. Listen, sir. I'm no one's doing. No one's down <laughs> with it, and I don't understand why. So I was just asking. I was like, <laughs> to, why is this not? Do you not like this? delicious wait wait when did you start doing this how is this something that you have is this something you've done since you were a child or like yeah <laughs> yo i'm <laughs> trans like you literally have a tea bag in your mouth. so good i get basically means i get tea in my mouth like created from my saliva like the residual tea so good oh man i'm so i'm so down with it 
Anyway, continue what you're saying about so <laughs> what I, we were talking I about. Use tea bags. I use I use one of the little like um bolitas. I don't know what they're called. The mesh balls, like the little balls, and I put loose herb in it, and then I herb herbs. Yes, herb. Okay. It's the herbs that are inside of the tea bag that you're sucking on. <laughs> I'll finish that one later. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. But anyway, I'm so down for tea bags. I'm not sure. I'm sure Yo, I, I would recommend it. Was, it. That's so licorice. Unique. Like I've never ever in my life ever ever no one has really ever put a tea bag in. Are you are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. Yo, I don't do you get know it. a lot of people who do this? Is this like a thing that you do with your friends? Oh <laughs> yeah, all my mates on this. This is a whole. This is a. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm just like, where's the community? That's what I'm saying. Oh my god, I can't breathe. <laughs> would <laughs> would recommend. Oh. Would recommend ten out of ten. Just yeah, ten out of ten. Look, this is informative. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. These labs are informative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it does. Ooh. It depends on the tea flavor, but like, yeah. I what mean, I won't go into it now. Thing? This is a yogi licorice tea. I mean, come on, yogi, you're with me. Licorice tea, of course. Yeah, it, right. So, like today, so it's like your strength is your own belief. That's what that's what I'm, that's what I'm here wow, for. That's so, so true. It gives you, like you you know, it gives you a lot of things to think about. Honestly, my peak of like this enlightenment so far has been when I figured out that if I don't believe in me, nobody's gonna believe in me. <laughs> like, oh yeah, that yeah. there's no way that I can move forward in life until I'm like you're the you're the baddest bitch in the room, bitch. Just because you're you, no one else. Yeah. Can that's it. Yeah. That's the only reason I, you're better than anyone else because you're you. I think that I think that comes really clear when you spend a lot of time alone. It's like, oh yeah, no, it really does have to come from me. Um, yeah, that really shifted but, just everything for me. Yeah, no, it's a huge one. So thank you, Yogi, for affirming this. We love we love an affirmation from Yogi. We do it every day. <laughs> In our mouths. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway. Well, back to sounds. Do you want to talk about sounds? What is your favorite chord? You can't ask me a question like that. Um, okay. What is, what is okay. your favorite chord progression? Well, let me see. Today, my favorite chord progression. Um, I, uh, I find, I think this is lovely. I think that's a really lovely sound. And, the, and I've recently gotten it. Well, it's A flat major with the ninth in first inversion. It looks, like, it looks like this. All right. Yeah. See, this is this is one of those moments that I'm talking about where I'm like, oh, I'm thinking you're gonna be like, A sharp, like, A sharp, minor, like. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm down for both of those notes as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I I used to sit I, when I was a kid, right? I'm still a kid. Well, I'm not really, but yeah, kind of. And I used to sit still, for a long time and yeah, just go like, kids, you know that? Yeah, yeah, I did know that. But yeah, I used to, I used to just kind of go like. And then I would go like and stuff. I would do this all day long. I just find sound. And so gradually, that, I could... that second one that you did. Can you do the second one? Oh my god, I love that. That sounds like, <laughs> that sounds like old Hollywood, like Tinkerbell twirling around real quick. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a gorgeous one. Yeah, that's so I collect these. So I have boxes that? of these in my mind. What's that one. This chord. Well, I suppose it's like an. It's kind of like an F sharp minor seven with an eleventh in it. Yeah, but then if you pivot to a G to major seven, you've got a little duo. I could do this all day oh, long. Can you send me that in a track? <laughs> yeah, if I remember it, I was right after this. I'll send it to you. Yeah. Well, it's going to be recorded, so. I'm hearing like a. No, I'm joking. Go off. <laughs> yeah. Casually ready. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean. So wait, you have a lot of floating guitar like things above your head what are what are all of those oh i've got a missing hook let, let me fill in my oh, missing dude, hook. you've got so, a yeah, I've stash got, you've got a, bit of, a little bit of a stash oh, let me put this guy back up oh, there you go so yeah so i've i've just i like things that make sounds right and so i collect them and these things here are mostly guitars um which is very convincing isn't it very convincing uh but then there's also other things like check out this this is a crazy this is an instrument from uh, Re from Reunion Island. Have you ever been there? From where? Reunion Island. It's like an island off the east coast of Madagascar. It's quite small. Reunion Island? 
Oh, I would so recommend this place. It's just most, one of the most special places in the world I've ever seen. Wow, well, I would love to, dude. All I love, honestly, island life is just my heart and soul is meant to be living on an island forever and ever. Amen. That I can, I can, I can get jiggy with that for sure. Um, that is sounds very conducive with what I like to do with my time. I went to Rio Island a couple of years ago and. It was the first time I'd ever done. Um, <laughs> it was the first time I'd ever done scuba diving, and it was the first time I'd ever done paragliding. And I was just like, "Island life is for me." Absolutely. I you got did this... paragliding, like parasailing. Yeah, I paraglided. I paraglid from the top of the <laughs> volcano paraglid. to the down to the beach, like the whole the whole island. From the oh, it was great. That's beautiful. Is that wait? When you say paragliding, you mean um, like when you're attached oh. to the boat and you go through the water, or no? Do I mean paragliding? Did you do Para like a hanger glide where like you were in? No, the paragliding, like para with a parachute, and you okay. run off the. There's, so there was like a slope, right? And then I ran, I run down the slope, and then there's a moment where my feet aren't running because I'm just in the air. You've been caught by the air. And it's what? amazing. Uh, and then you're like, okay, I'm just gonna method? chill. And then you look around. So like, I had to go with a guide because I'm like not a professional because it's my first time. So there's this like great guide, guide, great guide, such a great guide. And um, <laughs> he like, yeah, he like kind of, he was behind me and he was sort of like keeping me safe. And we were just drifting through and he'd be like, check out the waterfall. And I'd be like, wow. And then it'd be like, um, drag to the left so we can like turn corner. And... So I was like, I was a, like, I was a bird. Yeah, it was so, so special. I was so, recommend this as was an that experience. on reunion island as well it was yeah so it's called reunion island like as if like a like a reality tv show reunion type thing i mean it, so it's it's a french speaking island and it's called la reunion la reunion okay yeah la, la reunion and yeah you can get there from there's a flight direct from paris because it's, it's like a french colony so you can it's a quite long flight 18 hours on the plane but i like 18 hour flights that's my shit you like 18 hour flights is that what you said oh yeah i love them all right. Do you pop a Zan before, or like? No, oh hell no! No, I just sit. I just sit and just close my eyes and let my head go bananas. Oh, I mean, I would say that I would like to do that to myself, but I kind of go a little crazy after eighteen hours. Honestly, though, like I don't mind long flights if I'm first class. Like, if if, if I'm in like a good cabin with like a bed, put me on whatever the fuck flight you want. But if I'm in a kind of yeah, well, economy is, is, a, is a whole vibe. I've learned some tricks about economy, though. I, I'm like, I'm one of the guys who can so seamlessly and invisibly, like, climb over both people. Um, if I'm in the window seat, which normally I'm, I can, like, climb over two sleeping people without a feather. Just like, I and, like, know. no one wakes up and it's Listen, all seamless. Do you, partake, do you partake in, like, parkour part-time? Well, well, for fun, sure, like around my house. Yeah, I'm good. But, like, not for You really. must be. That's a, that's a feat, sir. Like, climbing over an economy seat of two humans like two economy seats well you, you know go, what it is you go via the front or via the back to get over it well so okay so now, now we're talking technique so okay if there's a blank seat That's behind part, bro. so like i like window seat right because it's the view okay and so if i look behind me and there's a blank seat in the middle of the two people sometimes there is and but i've got two people next to me then you can you can do it you can jump off that middle seat with your leg you can go like and then go and then use that as a as like a springboard but otherwise you just you've got to push on like this like the screen and the foot person next to you screen the front of the, the chair which they're probably watching like watching maybe but they're asleep you push on that and then you push on the back of their seat and you just go like that and you just have to be super strong and agile and then and you pop into the aisle and then the it's free. Strong agility thing i'm working on it but i don't know if i, I, don't, I don't know if i can do all that oh, oh yeah i don't know if i'm ready but I am, I am a little bit, I, like, I'm pretty small. I, maybe I could do it. Yeah, I, I think you wouldn't have a problem. I, and, just have, I have this thing that I just, I politely ask. I'm like, hey, excuse me, I gotta go to the restroom. I can't deal with the waking up. I can't deal with, like, excuse me. Oh, I'll wake the motherfucker up with no second thoughts. I'm like, listen, my bladder and I have reached yeah. <laughs> you must yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I think I, I get such a rush from it. Like, okay, challenge is on. And then, you know, the best thing is when you succeed and you jump onto the, into the aisle and someone saw you do it, sometimes they're like, <laughs> you know, and then you have like a vibe. They're like, you just did that? Yeah, and then you like start, you know, it's like, thank you, bro. And you keep on uh, going. Yeah. So these kinds of things failed? only happen on flights. Would I, have you ever had a failure or a slip up? Yeah, I have. Yeah, like there was this one time where I like I, 
I ended up sitting next to it. I was sitting like next to this girl on the plane. I was like kind of stoked about it. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. And so we, yeah, she was like gorgeous. And then we started playing a game on a notepad and it was like, this is going great. <laughs> and so we were like doing this stuff and then i was like oh yeah okay, i'm gonna go use the bathroom now and she was like okay yeah let me get up and i was like no no no, no. you stay sitting down i'll just jump over you i, I got I will this. take care of <laughs> and you so were about, dude you were parkouring to show off See, yeah i was i was ready i was like you're not gonna believe this the universe doesn't work out so but and then and then i tried to jump in and i was like <gasps> and then her water just went like <laughs> all over her body and i was like i'm so sorry <laughs> but then it was like fine in the end but it was it was fine it was it was like not clutch because I was like up until then I, I was I was it on. It could have been course. such an opportune moment. Like it could have been like. Well, it was an opportune moment. I just didn't take it in an opportune manner. Oh, yeah, you're right. My bad. Yeah. I forgot it, I was it's, it's still <laughs> it's still opportune now. It's it it's, is still it's, opportune. But it's but it's happened and it and so you know so now I'm like I don't I haven't learned my lesson. I still do it, but I just I'm slightly more careful. That's okay. You only had one slip up that one time. Oh yeah, I'm, I have a pretty good track record. That's amazing. Though. Then that was just because you were a little nervous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the thing. I was, I was just kind of like. Then that gets a know. pass. That gets a pass. You're okay. That, that, Thank that you. I appreciate. Skill. That is a skill you can claim. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So yeah, so like that, that flight was a good one, and and also Wait. in economy, right? You can lean your knees on the seat in front of you, which is so nice because I like I'm I'm such a fetus. I like I like this. But then in, in economy plus or but in first class. But it hurts you, when you're in economy and you put your feet up. Or are you bother the person in front of you? That is more my vibe. Yeah. You're a botherer or a people? I'm a bother. I'm so bothersome. You know why? Because oh I do this God, on the seat. And then and then I go like and then I go like <laughs> and then the, and then it's like, could you not? You know, you get like the guy just being like blah blah blah, blah <laughs> which is which is a vibe. Yo, so I've learned I how to deflect people up. I couldn't handle that. Nope. Not me, sir. No. Nope. One time yeah. I had this woman behind me. Mm -hmm. She wanted to put her feet up and she was very adamant about the fact that I was not allowed to recline. <laughs> I was like, ma'am, I'm I'm gonna recline. Like this is a long <laughs> flight. Yeah, I'm going to recline. Ma'am, I'll have you she know was like, you're not reclining your seat. I'm giving my legs up. I was like, No, you're not. <laughs> No, you're not. You better fucking. You better put your legs down, man. Yeah, yeah, ma ma man. If I may. No. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I had to get a whole flight attendant involved, and the flight attendant was literally like, she looked at me, and I told her what was going on, and she looked back at the woman, and she was like, "Ma'am, um, please put your legs down and let her request." Her <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you Win. doing? Like, what? Obviously, everyone has the right to recline their seat, ma'am. Yeah, I don't know what she was expecting, but that's she that's kind of an epic story. Day, so she was such a beautiful is this is this economy tales? Is this like tales this of is economy? economy tales, man? This is why yeah. I gotta stay Hashtag. especially especially if we're gonna be going on like a long flight. That's my main thing. I I'm not a picky. Okay, I can definitely do an economy flight easy, no problem. Like if that's what it is, that's what it takes. I'm with it. It's cheaper. But, I'm with that. but oh, reclining okay. is happening, right? Reclining's still happening, and you know when I'm on a window seat, I can really. You know what I mean? Like, I can get really comfy. I can be fine. Yeah, you can. I also like feeling fetus and like, claustrophobic and, like, tight. Like I love, that's what I'm all about. I just, I'm such a curler. I'm such a curler. I'm such a curler. What do you sleep? Okay, so, How do you sleep? What's your, like, position, go-to position? Oh, uh, um, well, I don't know what, I don't know where I end up. I do left and right, but I'm, I'm a, yeah, I'm a, I'm a complete kind of, yeah, I'm a, so I told you I'm a curler. Just totally like that? Like, yeah just That's like good. yeah tossing and turning I, I but um, a little bit fetusy with my with my arm like this oh you do you you're a one arm up one arm down yeah, right? I, i've got fucked up shoulders man like i do oh. not sleep well at all sometimes i sleep just do you ever do this like sleeping like completely just on your front <laughs> just kind of just like this but like this is the view of the bed <laughs> so you're just like <laughs> you ever do that Yes, I do. I'm I do that more like to chill, though, not necessarily to sleep. In interesting, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I went to, like on my belly. Well, we we went like here. This was yeah, we went, we went we went all the way up. <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> this is great. Um, Wait, you never even told me about the instrument that you were about to show us. 
Oh yeah. Well, okay. So this is basically it's like really it's really loud. It's a really loud oh, instrument. But... Yeah, yeah. So and and you do like this, but there's a, there's a kind of but but the technique is to go like I don't know like and it's I don't know how loud that is. It's like a shaker. Yeah, but it's like so it just cuts straight through everything. Like, what? So. Yeah, so there's an amazing style of music, and I actually can't remember the name of it now, but but it's all in three divisions, like one, two, one, two, and then people sing and they play along to it, but this is like the, in the middle of that whole sound. Wow. Such a vibe. Worth all 18 hours of playing have flight. Have you used that instrument on anything you've made? I have. I try to use everything. On anything that's out or anything that hasn't come out? You know, I'm not sure, because sometimes like, it, the idea to record it is so fast that you forget what you did it on. But how quickly like, do you it, get through like a track? Like how long does one track usually take you? Like do you when you do depends. it, do you do like one sitting, you finish something because you're so zoned in, or is it like you do something and you kind of let it breathe and you come back to it and then you just build multiple things simultaneously? Yeah, a bit like that. I'm I'm not particularly good at finishing stuff. I'm really good at starting. I'll be, I'll start all day long. I'll be like, woo, 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 potentially so high, blah, blah, blah. but finishing <laughs> is harder, which is why I decided to do four albums because I figured it would make me get finishing together. Because you can't not finish for like you have to finish. So I'm getting better at it, but it depends. Sometimes I can, sometimes it's a thought and it happens in four hours and it's mixed completely. And, and like written and mixed and everything. And sometimes it takes like two years, right? You like plant the seed and then two years later you figure out what the seed is actually meant for and you put the seed in the thing and then it grows and you're like, ah. Oh. Because sometimes you have an idea that you don't have enough life experience to like fledge, you know? Tell and then me you have to... about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, you know. Are you talking lyrically or are you talking sonically though? Oh, both. Both. There'll be a, so there'll how be a thing that life feels. life experience influence your sonic choice? Because it's a language the same as words is. Like it's absorbing a, it's like just, that language from other places and like yeah it was it's like you know how, like you know how you you probably haven't learned learned like new words in english substantially for like a long time but you're now thinking of new ways to use english just from your life yeah it's, I, I guess I it's the same with spanish i'm learning a lot vocabulary wise with spanish because i've been taught really, yeah since i moved back to miami like a lot of my friends used to be spanish with each other and like my family and stuff so like have I've you always written music in both Spanish and English? Have you always been writing both languages? Yeah. That's so rad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I speak both That's so languages. rad. Yeah. But I'm learning a lot more words in Spanish. Like, just, like, kind of at the level at which I express myself in English. Because um, obviously yeah. I went to school longer in English. And I had Spanish classes throughout my career. But career. My, <laughs> my career. My scholarly <laughs> career. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, oh my God, this is not like Jane and I am. Okay. Yeah, um, sure. Throughout my schooling, I had Spanish classes, but it was just a class. It wasn't the default language that I was speaking in, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm doing a lot more of that right now and learning a lot of words. That's crazy. So, so I understand what you mean when you say that sounds are a language and that. So, yeah, I, I, like there's some, there is times in your life where you need to do that vocab training. You, you want to like get everything, right? So when I was like 16, 17, I was like so thirsty. I was like, all I want is just stuff. Give me stuff. Give me chords. Give me like systems. Give me rhythm, weird stuff that's going to blow my mind. And I like got it all in. And then, and then after about two or three years, I stopped kind of being obsessive about this direction. And I became more obsessive about like this direction like consolidating it all and so now when i make music it's not necessarily that i've learned something brand new and i'm going to use it it's more that like i thought that this and this would mean something that i wasn't capable of feeling five years ago right like the, Got it. So it's like, the, kind of like the a distance tool, like a toolbox yeah now. yeah it's like a toolbox um i mean everyone has a toolbox with language but with music it's so interesting to draw upon all these materials and you're like whoa i've got this from this and this from this and but I wouldn't have thought to make something that feels like this until now, right? And for me, a lot of that is like leaving things out because when I was 16, I was such a maximalist. I'm still a maximalist. But I I'm was such just a like, minimalist. I'm such really? a minimalist. And I know oh. you're a maximalist for sure. Yeah. You have like six yeah, plus layers. I'm just be like, it's happening. Yeah. Like, how do you think of all those parts? 
yeah, you just, you just, you kind of let your imagination go wild, and then it just it's like incredible though. Like just the sound, the sound is so spectacular. So it's just like well, th thank you. I mean, I think what I'm learning now is just like it can be so beautiful to take something out. And normally, what happens when I take something out is I'll think of five things that could go in its place. And so you start with a hundred, take out five things, and you get back like twenty things, and then you remove and you add them. That process of removing and adding kind of comes from your life. It doesn't come from your knowledge. It comes from your life. And you might hear someone sing in a certain way or get with a certain groove or whatever. And you're like, I, I feel that. Like, I feel you with that. And then the feeling, that, the feeling that it gave you is the thing that is inspiring. Like, not the, not the kick drum sound per se. Either that can be sometimes inspiring. But it's more like, oh, music can feel like that. I understand that the sound influence a feeling. Because that's, that's something that's very, always been very vital to me is like, yeah. I use needs to be intentional and it needs to make sense like and in my writing process I'm usually like very informed by the beat before I write anything because to me like the sounds set the mood that yeah. should inform the lyric because then all of those things working together is going to convey whatever yeah. you're trying to say so much more efficiently you know oh yeah I'm so with you I'm so yeah, with you. I like the right the sound when you get the right way. sound yeah, when you the feeling of getting like the yeah the right chord or the right sound like the right, the right snare kick drum, or like it's like it's not right the kick drum man. Me, it's what the, that choice of sound makes you feel. Yeah, what it makes you feel. Yeah, I've always been obsessed with that. Like, how can I understand this? How can I get? Blah, blah, blah. And I'll be tweaking EQ and be like, I want to feel it in my chest, or I want it to feel kind of shallow and tight, or I want it to feel like huge Dude, I and so snappy. Many and... I use so many adjectives. That's how I describe things. That's why I really want to get more because I'm trying to like learn piano right now like just like a little bit <laughs> like just kind of like sick because i i used to take it when i was little and i just never dedicated myself to it i'm not, i'm a bad practicer like a really bad practice me too i'm horrendous oh my god yeah but you're but you're curious to the degree of like discipline you know what i mean i'm not curious i, to the I don't know that's true i'm, I'm curious to the degree it of determination like, it sounds like it's true well, I mean, I think there's an amount of discipline that's involved, but you don't feel it. It doesn't feel like discipline. It's not like, okay, now I'm going to work hard. It's like, but my intention, it lasts as long as this will take. So I'm just going to do yeah. it. And it doesn't feel like work, right? 100%. What happened to your life? We're back. Oh, C major. Do, 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 do. No, that was nice. Not I did not copy that. <laughs> no, no. But it's, it's all good, you know, it's fine. <laughs> I love that you know that. Is that each note is played out? Yeah, it was, like, what I heard was kind of like, it went like, yeah, it went like, right? Yeah, that was what it was. That's what, that's what I heard, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, I can't hear you anymore. Oh, no, I can't hear you now, I think. The Bluetooth really tried it. Yo. This iPhone is oh, Bluetooth and it's connected to before so I just tried to do that crazy okay that makes sense so yeah so your mirror's in c what else what happened to you why are you why do you sound like that oh am i am i strange it's sounding a little yeah like um underwater -y. i was sounding out of water -y. very strange should I, should I jump back out and jump back on again maybe yeah let's try that okay yeah, yeah i'll do it one sec okay Send that message again. I love him so much. <laughs> so fucking funny. Oh my god. Come on back. Come back. Come back. Go live. Hey. Hi, hello. Welcome back. Is this better? Can you hear me all right now? It's still the same, but you know, whatever. Are you kidding me? Really? It's the same? Yeah, it just, and you know what it sounds like? It sounds like when you have, like, earbuds in. Hmm. That is, uh, that's a little, that's a little strange. I mean, it if you can't hear my... It's, it's not too terrible, to be honest. Oh. Well, okay, let me know if you want me to restart it, because we can, we can restart it again. Well, if, if you restart it, then it might work as well, but then that will be a bit of a shame. Yeah, if I restart it, then we'll lose the whole vibe. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. That'll yeah. be fun because we've had so much fun. This has been so good. I mean, this has been like my, one of my favorite Instagram lives of all time. 
Really? Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, think how much we've spoken about. Honestly, this is what I love about these things. Like, I, I especially love talking to like friends and just creatives because there's so much to discuss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's so much. I have I have one question for you that I have remaining, which is, if we were on an eight and hour flight together, say from Paris to Rhode Island, then what would you want to do? In the on the flight or yeah yeah like if we were side by side, like what what are your what are your techniques for passing the time? Uh, one is sleeping. Okay. I usually smoke before a flight, so I'll probably be feeling sleepy. So okay, I'll do I'll... that, and I'll be sleepy. Okay. I like watching movies. I love okay, movies. I'm done with that. I'll read. I will eat at every time there's a ding. For the I food. agree with this. Especially if I'm in British class, like, oh. <laughs> Metal cutleries and stuff? Exactly. <laughs> Um, what else do I do the past time? Honestly, sometimes I think. So that's, that's the best one, right? I sit and think and write a lot. I've actually come to some pretty genius conclusions on flights. I'm not going to lie. On yeah. flights, like, yeah, me, me, I've had some pretty too. philosophical moments in my journals on flights. Like one yeah. time I saw the Amy movie. I watched that on a flight too. <sighs> Devastating. Uh -huh. Yo, okay, but seriously though, like from certain angles, that bitch and I really look a lot alike, <laughs> and it really and it really <laughs> creeps me out. It creeps me out a lot. So I just I felt her so much, and just felt like so connected to her energy through the film, like in the photos that I was seeing and the footage that I was seeing of her. That's just, so crazy. I felt her soul really intensely, and especially via what I was personally passing through at that point in my life when I watched it. Yeah, and it was just such a like. Mo like an impactful moment for me so then I like wrote about it and yeah. it, literally, it literally took up like like 17 pages in my journal <laughs> do, do you find that like um that your threshold for like tears on on plane watching on films watched on planes is like way lower than it normally is the tears are lower on planes as as in like as in like your your threshold for like, like finding something like really no, more likely. As in, like, if if, oh, if the right. threshold is oh, lower, the like, threshold is lower. I understand. anything makes it, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I find I find this to be true for me. I agree with you, but I'm also just. I'll, I told you I'm a water baby, and I cry like nobody's business. I cry right. Oh, okay. <laughs> I cry very much. I got audio is weird. Let me. They're they're talking shit. I also have three. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! I need to find a charger. <laughs> That would be such a shame. That would that would be a, a, a huge shame. Hold up. Oh, Wait I can't see it. it. You're cutting out. Amazing. Wait a minute. My bad. The internet is kind of trash. The internet is a bit trash. But a little I'm bit. Can you hear me now? I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. They're saying that my sound is trash. Hmm. We could we could restart it. Can you hear me now? I can kind of hear you. I'm good. Lauren, please increase the volume. Lauren, please increase your volume. Hmm. Let me see if I can just... Do, do, do. <laughs> All right. How about now, guys? Does it sound a little bit better? I can hear you just fine. Hello, hello. Yeah, but if they can't hear me, then that means when I save it, they're probably not going to be able to hear me. No sé, I always move. Todo el mundo diciendo la misma cosa. ¿Qué hacemos? ¿Qué hacemos? I can only hear the phone dies every week, Lauren. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> is that true? Calling me out. Honestly, I yeah, I'm the worst at charging my phone. My my phone is in constant death, like in a constant state of almost death. What what phone do you have? Do you have a phone which is unruly with battery? I have an iPhone, man. 
Oh yeah, well then you should be fine. You would think, right? You would think. I would think. I would most definitely think. Well, no. <laughs> Technology lied. Mm -mm. Mm. All right. One of the last questions that I have for you is just, I think it's just like, as a sum up, like what has music helped you heal? Like, do you feel like music has been like a healing tool in your life and just kind of like, how, you know? Good question. My goodness. Um, well, I think that, so I so think of music as a language so, so much of the time. Um, and I think that when I was a, a kid, a boy, and that's obviously I'm still quite young, but it was such a freeing language to talk music rather than English sometimes because you can say a lot more. And so I think that by saying things that could make any degree of sense to anybody, I was able to find a kind of innate power in who I was that wasn't connected to who I appeared to be. And when that connected up, then I was able to know myself so much faster. It was like a sort of accelerated process of self-learning and, and I, I guess of self-love and self-forgiveness as well. Because when you, when you speak a language that feels like it's honest and like you're able to tell the truth of it, once you get a taste of that catharsis, it's so addictive. And so I find myself using music as a way of figuring out how I'm really feeling. Like sometimes I'll be in a, in a funk or whatever and my, and my friends will be like, hey, what, what's up? Or my family, like, how are you doing? And I, I find myself saying, well, I'm okay, I, I don't blah, blah, blah. But the moment I sit at the piano or the moment I sit at the, at the creation zone, um, I feel like something comes out that's mo way more honest. And so I think honesty leads to growth and growth can lead to honesty. And I find that structure like extremely satisfying and like in an ongoing way, very cool. But I also just like to dance. And so like, so like music makes you dance as well. And that's like enough, right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. What about that's you? Beautiful, babe. For me, yeah, dude. I mean, for, for me, lyrics and expressing myself through what I'm writing, like poetry wise, you're just getting out. Um, like this always happens to me, it happened to me twice in the past couple of days where I'll just be sitting and just this like, phrase will come into my mind that really sums up how I feel and then I'll just, yeah. kind of, I'll just kind of meditate on that and then my brain will repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and then it's like okay I need to write this down like clearly yeah. and it ends up being, yeah, yeah. being like Some, a prompt something's for, going on yeah and it ends up being a prompt and I, I'm able again to express like those inner workings like you're talking about through that medium and it's yeah. the most effective thing and it, it for me has healed a lot of really like intense moments that I was maybe feeling confused about or feeling you know dishonest about in my real life I was really able to be as like the most honest through what I was saying exactly I'm Even so with you that, like, I wasn't ready to confront yet like that happened to me a mm -hmm. lot like in the past couple years when I was when I've been writing these songs like I'll write something and I'll be like, why am I writing about this? Like, this doesn't even, I don't even feel like this. You know what I mean? Like, I literally, like, my conscious mind hadn't even looked at Figured that out and processed them, you know? So I would be like, yeah. why am I even writing about this? And then later on, I'll listen to the song and I'll be like, fuck, oh, dude, that's exactly how She I had it. She had it all figured out. Yeah. Yeah. I find that so crazy sometimes when I listen back to something that I did, maybe in a moment of kind of like shutdown or whatever, and I'll come back to it later and I'll be like, wow, he really... He really got it. And I can't articulate it anymore, but that was what I was feeling. And music kind of came to that. It, it came into my hands right when I needed to have a language to speak. But like vague language is so powerful because you're not saying like, you are this, or I believe this to be true, or something, blah, 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 blah. It's not even about you. It doesn't even have to be about you. It can just be about being. And sometimes when you remove yourself from the table, shit gets clearer. I found that to be true, right? That's the most awesome, yes, for sure. Yeah. When, you re when you realize, that's kind of like the whole point of meditation too, is like mm -hmm. becoming the observer and, and looking at things from a higher perspective or a higher self's perspective versus like being so intimately in the moment that you forget, or so intimately in your past that you forget like to breathe and slow. Totally, yeah. And it, it can remind you what that feels like. You know, because cause it's like the writing process is like a, a sense of flow. And so when you enter into it, it's like, oh, yeah, I remember now. It's not about the passing things. It's just about e everything. And, and I think for me, especially when I've been traveling a bunch or I've been under loads of pressure or I've 
like whether it's from myself or whether it's from the outside world or whatever and all those pressures they kind of they kind of alchemize with music it's like okay so any friction that feels like a burden oh i can use that friction to make a spark and it's like whoa that's freeing yeah i remember my first heartbreak that i ever had like i'll never forget like it wasn't until i wrote a song about it that i felt better like i yeah I, <laughs> really i i literally i was like 15 young in love like little sensitive ass cancer heart that thought she watched way too many disney movies growing up and thought she was gonna marry this dude crazy i'm picturing it i'm picturing it right now oh my god i really thought this kid and i were gonna get married bro it was ridiculous <laughs> but literally my heart was so so broken and i like oh I, I couldn't sleep i was like Aww. crying all the time it was like really bad okay and then i finally like put all my feelings into the song and just like it was the first song i ever wrote and i like got it out and like i played the little chords like i came up with the whole thing by myself and then i, I remember i wrote it and then i played it for one of my friends because i had to like get it out of myself and yeah. have someone else like tangibly hear it and um, she literally started crying and she was like, Lauren, I didn't know you were feeling like this. I was like, <laughs> I didn't know I was feeling like this either. Either. Oh, that's so beautiful. That is so beautiful. And yeah, I've had I, not, not exactly the same experiences as that, but similar experiences where you're super heartbroken or super distressed or super confused. And by making something that you can like kind of hold, it's like, so... I'm owning the feelings now. Like they're not bigger than me. They're like to scale and I can grapple and it doesn't make them easier, but it makes them more sizable. And then you can grapple. Yeah, I'm understandable. And then you work through it by expressing it. And it's like such an important thing to, to get down with, I think. So like, I feel like people who write music have this sort of access to this window of, window of truth, yeah, which is super special and can come in real clutch at times, you know? I agree, especially when there's so much anger in the world. Like we get to transmute yeah. so much of that stuff through what we do, which I think is really beautiful. I agree. And then in a time like this where everyone's kind of wondering what the heck's going on, I think of like creatives a bit like alchemists in the sense that we don't have to be grappling with the real world all day long in the same way. We can be grappling with our inner worlds, but in so doing, we can increase the number of available realities for everybody. And we can take the strange forces and grapple them and turn them and twist them into something which has form out of nothing. And so anybody who the heck? No, this is Oh no, I'm losing you. Are you back? Mm. Are you there? Hey. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, about you, that. you did you gave me a spinny wheel. You were wheel. saying something so beautiful. Continue, please. Okay, I don't know. I don't know where you guys lost me, but yeah, I was basically just talking about how you can make form out of something that doesn't have form, and that sense of purpose and power can be just utterly glorious and very alchemic, and of massive amounts of value, because it can be so liberating to people to think, oh, this is possible. I can operate within this person's universe today, or this 100%. person's universe today. One hundred percent. I think that the whole world would be in a much more peaceful place if we all kind of realize that we're all living in our own perspectives and realities that have been created like via our own experiences, whatever they may be, you know what I mean, which are a wide range of experiences. But we yeah. have so much to learn from each other. And I think that music is such a beautiful way for each of us artists to share what's going on in our little worlds, you know? And You're so right. connect with other people in their little worlds and like kind of I see it like we're all in our little bubbles and then the bu you know in bubbles like they they come into contact with each other and then they merge. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a lovely image. That's how it feels. When, that's that's so how it feels when a fan sings black lyrics to me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I it's like, like you've like, completed my bubble. It's like we're merging bubbles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's such a beautiful image. I, I really treasure that a lot. That's mega. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for freaking coming on and having this discussion with me. Are you kidding me? It's my freaking privilege. Thanks for having me. This has been fun. Yeah, I hope that we get to hang out in person soon and create. Oh, please. Create with you, Jacob. Please, okay. please, please. Anytime. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Necessary. Mwah. Lots of love. Ciao, ciao. Good luck Bye. on the performance. Kill it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. And that is another episode of Attunement, Angels.
Uh, I'm so sorry about the internet connection and all of the kind of like little technical difficulties, but I hope that you were able to absorb and hear the majority of that conversation because it was so beautiful. And I love Jacob so much. And he is a little savant. So if you have an opportunity, definitely go check out his music. It is so beautiful and healing. Um, yeah, so thank you guys for coming through. Happy Sunday. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And I'll see you next week. That was really sweet. I'm, I'm sorry.